After a record low start to the winter in terms of snowfall, winter has finally come for New York's North Country. Snowfall over the past week has topped two feet locally, and more is on the way over the next couple of days. With that, an often underexposed and misunderstood part of the all-terrain type of build is winter traction, snow specifically. After all, all-terrain isn't just grass, gravel, and mud, you know, the fun stuff. It includes snow and ice as well. For this video, I wanted to briefly touch on my experience with winter traction on my own build in the hopes that some of you will find it useful when choosing tires for your own vehicles. Now, I'm going to start this video off with a couple of disclaimers. So first off, no all-terrain tire is going to be a substitute for a legitimate winter tire, plain and simple. I want to stress winter here because a winter tire is more than just snow and ice, okay? The temperature itself can actually be one of the biggest factors in a tire's traction. As the ambient temperature decreases, rubber becomes less and less flexible. And that flexibility and ability to reach down and grab onto the terrain, even if that terrain is a cold, dry road, is critical to a tire's traction. In this community, we tend to get kind of fixated or infatuated with the tire's tread. Though tread and its characteristics are important, a winter tire's specialized compound is going to be the greatest contributor to its advantage on snow and ice. Secondly, I am not a tire scientist, a tireologist, if you will. I haven't written a dissertation on tire coefficients of friction. I do, however, have a good bit of time off-road across a wide variety of terrain, and I do extensive research on anything that touches my vehicle. So hopefully that counts for something. Currently on the Gladiator, I'm running the set of BFG KO2s and 37 by 12.5 R17 Load Range C. I chose these tires for a number of reasons. After installing my Clayton 2.5 inch lift, I decided that it was time to make a change from the absolutely fantastic 35 inch Nitto Ridge Grapplers that I was running to something a bit larger and more all purpose. I actually did do a similar review a couple years back regarding the Nittos, so I encourage you to check that video out on my channel if you're interested. Granted, as you can see, the amount of snowfall is night and day compared to what I'm now dealing with in the North Country, but the Nittos did perform admirably in pretty much any environment that I put them in from a nasty wintry mix topped off with ice on unsalted roads in Tennessee, to some of the slickest mud that I have ever had the displeasure of coming across after a fresh rain in Mississippi. But anyway, let's get back to the KO2. So another reason that I chose those is for their load range. These ones are load range C, and coming from a load range E tire, that means that for the trade-off of slightly reduced durability and allowable load, I am significantly reducing my tire weight while increasing tire pliability. I cr actually crunched the numbers and due to the reduction in weight going from the 35s up to the 37s, it requires roughly 14% less force to get the tires rolling. That combined with the reduction in unsprung weight from making the change actually resulted in a slight increase in fuel economy, believe it or not, without a regear. Lastly, I wanted the tire that was three peak mountain snowflake rated. Admittedly, the test for Three Peak Mountain Snowflake certification is pretty narrow since it only focuses on acceleration. However, it does still provide some additional peace of mind, and being that there are no common winter tires in the tire size that I run, it was the next best option. Now, it's time for the science behind it all. First, as previously mentioned, winter tires excel due in large part to their specialized compounds. In a similar fashion, with all other things being the same, an all-terrain tire with a softer compound will generally perform better than an all-terrain tire with a tougher, less flexible compound. Second, in most conditions, that is, those that don't require a tire to float, a narrower tire will perform better in snow than a wider tire will. A narrower tire is going to help with cutting through the fluff, so to speak, allowing the tire to get down to the grippier surface below. Third, and perhaps most surprisingly since it's kind of counterintuitive to how we approach driving in mud, you want a tire that will expel water and slush, but won't completely eject snow from the treads. I know what you're thinking, but stick with me here. Think about it this way. What bonds better to ice crystals than other ice crystals? I'll give you a hint, it's not cold rubber. It's a lot easier to make a dense snowball completely out of snow than it is to try and form one around a balloon, right? Same idea. Packed snow and siping and tread will actually increase your traction on the snow. For proof of this, just check out a set of winter tires in action. At the end of the day, the BFG KO2s were the best all-around option for me personally and for how I use my vehicle. 
They're an excellent combination of both off-road grip and on-road manners, particularly in the sea load range. Having said that, there are other notable three-peak mountain snowflake rated all-terrain tires to check out as well, such as the Falcon Wild Peaks or the Kenda Cleavers. I will go on record as saying, however, that if I did have an all-wheel drive vehicle with smaller tires, like a Subaru, I would absolutely own a dedicated set of winter tires in the same size as a set of all-terrains for the other three seasons. If you truly want the best winter performance from a tire, having a dedicated winter tire is the only correct answer here. Regardless of what tires you run, always remember to change your driving habits based on the weather conditions. Reduce your speed, don't make sudden control inputs, and leave yourself plenty of space to both stop and maneuver. Alright, so thanks for watching guys. I hope you found this video to be informative. If you did, do me a favor and hit those like and subscribe buttons, and feel free to drop a comment below. I always love hearing from you guys. Make sure to keep an eye out for more content coming soon as well. Until next time, be sure to keep safe, and I hope to see you all out on the trails.